Dear friends, today we are going to discuss the IUPAC nomenclature of organic compounds. What is IUPAC nomenclature? That is the nomenclature designated by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Let us see. We are going to learn and understand the IUPAC rules for nomenclature of various organic compounds. And from that we are going to draw a structure of a compound from a given IUPAC name and vice versa. We can give an IUPAC name if we have a structure available in this. There are basically two systems followed for the nomenclature of compounds, the age-old common or trivial systems and the IUPAC system. But most common systems are now redundant. More and more use of IUPAC system all across the world is going on. Let us see some general rules of IUPAC nomenclature, but before that, we understand IUPAC is International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. The office is situated in Geneva, Switzerland. It's an harmonized system for the nomenclature of organic compounds, which is acceptable, followed and understood all across the world. It is a highly systematic nomenclature system for organic chemical compounds. And for a given IUPAC name, only one structure can be written all across the world. This helps in translation of a structure to a compound and vice versa. That means from compound you can draw a structure. The IUPAC name consists of a base name. It can be just the simple root name or it can be a prefix attached to the root name making it a base name. We are going to discuss few general rules for writing IUPAC names. For that we are taking here an example of a 5 carbon compound 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and we will see whatever name has come how systematically following the rules we have arrived at that name. Look at the longest chain containing the principal functional group and as many of the secondary functional groups or substituents and multiple bonds as possible. So here there are two functional groups C double bond O and OH. C double bond O is the principal functional group. So the locate the longest chain which comprises of the principal functional group. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This also can take care of this OH attached and we can actually put this as a prefix. So we have identified the longest carbon chain which is 5 membered. So the root word corresponds to the length of this chain. So length of this chain is 5 so we call it as pent. Pentane, pent. Number the longest chain selected from the end nearer to the func principal functional group or substituents or the side chain if there is no functional group. So we have two options. We can either start numbering from here or we can start numbering from the right hand to left hand side. But as the rule says, from the end nearer the principal functional group, so we have to number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <clears throat> Depending on the nature of the carbon-carbon band, you can add suffix in, in or ain. Now we don't have any carbon-carbon double bond, so we are fine with in. So this is a pentane derivative and not a pentane or pentane derivative. As the principal functional group is keto, our pentane will change to one. 
so it is pentanone so this is a root name pentanone now we have to number the chain from that end which gives lowest number to the principal function group therefore we start from rhs as we discussed so it becomes pentan 2 on or 2 pentanone that is our root name and add a suitable prefix to indicate the number and position of the side chain so we have a side chain the other function group OH so 4 hydroxy 2 pentanone or 4 hydroxy pentan 2 on is the final name let us take another example say we have here now six carbon chain so it is clear and there is no unsaturation so the root name is hexane fine and we have a substituent which is the functional group so it is at situated at three number now we start numbering from here had we started numbering from here it would have got four numbers so lowest number we get is three so our root name is or our base name is 3 chlorohexane and to that we prefix our uh, uh, this uh, what you say um, substituent so 2 methyl 3 chlorohexane i think now it is better understood and that is what is happening let us now see discuss these iupac rules in more details and uh, if the base name of a compound is also the name of actual compound the prefix is joined to the base name to give one word of name so that is what we have done in both the chlorohexane 2 methyl 3 chlorohexane so we have joined it with a prefix 3 chlorohexane So our base name became chlorohexane, and we have no problem with it because chlorohexane exists in reality. But we cannot do this with some few compounds which are salts, esters, anhydrides, or chlorides. We cannot give them a one single word, but we have to break them into two words because. the base name chloride or ethanoid in reality only singly ethanoid or chloride doesn't exist but its salt do exist and then the such cases we have to separate the two words with single space so this exception you should remember to choose the base name of the compound one should choose the parent part of the molecule that is the most substituted longest part an important part bearing the principal functional group for example the st structure of label carbon is the longest chain it has most number of substituents an important functional group so it becomes a parent chain the nature of the base chain the number of carbon atoms present and the functional group attached to it provide the root or base name so here we have the base name is 1 2 3 4 5 principal functional group is oh so our base name is we can say pentanol and pentan 2 all now you prefix to it 3 methyl pentan 2 all third is the most important function group determines the suffix to the root for constructing the base name if more than one function group is present then the more important function group gets the priority and becomes the principal functional group and the order is this is the increasing order as listed 
Now here we have got two examples of multiple functional groups. First is 2 hydroxybenzoic acid. So now we have to discuss why we call it so. Why can't we call it as 2 carboxyphenol? So let us check our list. And in the order of priority, COOH gets more preference over the hydroxyl. And therefore, our root name or base name becomes benzoic acid and this becomes a prefix. On similar lines, here also we have two functional groups and here we have again COOH, so carboxylic acid group is here and we have a double bond, double bond is far behind in priority. So it is pentanoic acid but because we have a double bond it is pentanoic acid and then we attach the substituents. So we have 1, 2, 3, so 3 methyl 2 pentanoic acid. I think it's quite clear now to understand the rules. Each of the carbon atoms in the base pin base uh, carbon chain is numbered sequentially. The position of the functional groups and hydrocarbon groups are indicated by the numbers. The assigned number to the carbon atom which bears the substituent is called as the location number or the locant of the substituent. Okay, so we can say that 3 methyl is a locant. 3, 3 number is a locant of methyl and we are going to see more in this. Open chain compounds particularly the numbering of the carbon atoms of the base chain is done from the end carbon that will give the lowest number to the primary function. If the primary functional group is equidistant from both the ends then the numbering should be done from that carbon which will end up with lowest sum of the numbers of the carbon carrying the substituents or the sum total of the locant should be lowest. So we are seeing here one example where we can go from both sides and we will get different locants. So for example, we have taken here uh, pentanthiol in both the cases the OH is exactly in the center and we have a methyl substituent as the second uh, uh, priority group. Now we can start from left hand side to right hand side or we can start from right hand side to left hand side. So what happens? We have one locant is at 3 fixed in both and second locant here it is 2, here it is 4. So if we do the sum, 3 plus 2 is 5, 4 plus 3 is 7. Which is the lowest? 3 plus 2 or 2 plus 3, 5 is the lowest. So this structure is right. Now this name is right. This name we cannot give because it is higher. Same happens in case of alicyclic or benzene compounds, the numbering of the carbon atoms will follow the same way in such a way that the sum total of the locant should come lowest. So here we have COOH, we are going to start with COOH because it is the principal functional group 1. We can either go clockwise or we can clockwise or we can go anticlockwise. Now if we go clockwise, the locant for OH will come 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. But if we go anticlockwise, the locant will come 2, 1 plus 2 is 3. So this structure will be preferred or this sorry the name will be preferred. So we should call this as 2 hydroxybenzoic acid and not 6 hydroxybenzoic acid. Polynuclear or aromatic or alicyclic compounds like naphthalenes and anthracenes and phenacrines have various systems of numbering 
we can go either clockwise or anti clockwise in various types or we can start the numbering from different different patterns and accordingly then when we have substituted poly as nuclear aromatic compounds we have to again judge that the sum of the locant should be minimum and accordingly the name should be given in case of heterocyclic compounds always the nuclear heteroatom gets the first number or the first priority number and we start numbering from that atom like in pyrrole we start from n from furan we start from o and with thiophene we start from sulfur so the locant of the primary function is join to the base name by a hyphen so for example if we have uh, similar to two hydroxy benzoic acid we can have two furoic acid it had coh here or we can have three methyl thiophene now there are some certain small points if the primary functional group is unique and the locant is not indicated then because in case of butanone propanol propene you can directly take it as a name so you understand that the when the primary function is if the primary function is a part of the base carbon chain then the carbon atom of the functional group is considered and numbered if it is not terminal So the primary functional group is at the terminal carbon we don't give it numbering in the naming also same applies for the primary function of an alicyclic compound and benzene derivatives and are considered always as one position or starting position in numbering that we have already seen the names of the functional groups other than primary and those of the branches are denoted by prefixes to the base name of a compound <clears throat> like 2 methyl butanol now as we discussed now we don't call it as butanol or 2 methyl butanol branches are always indicated by prefixes and the locus is prefixed by name by a hyphen and combined part is joined to this name so two methyl butanol though i have called it as one butanol we should just call it two methyl butanol and word <clears throat> if the base name bears the locant of primary function the prefix is joined to the base name by hyphen which we have already seen fine we have two methyl groups so two three dimethyl will be the prefix and then we have butanol if there are two or more substituents branches or functions each of them is combined with its locus and the combined parts are arranged either alphabetically on an order of increasing complexity and join each other by hyphen the last combined part is then joined to the base name without hyphen now here we have two pentanol as the base name but we have three substituents one methyl at the position 4 another methyl at position 3 and we have an ethyl at position 3 again now alphabetically ethyl will come first so we will call it as 3 ethyl and then we will call it as 3,4 dimethyl and because we have two so we call it as dimethyl and 3,4 are separated by comma and these substituents are again separated by hyphens and then they are joined to our base name so become 3 ethyl 3,4 dimethyl 2 pentanol next point 
if there are two or more identical substituents the number of such a group is indicated by a prefix as die for 2 tri for 3 tetra for 4 penta for 5 hexa for 6 <coughs> This this above thing is only explained in more detail. And such substituents are all written and written in an increasing order alphabetically, separated by commas, and the last number is separated by the from the name of the substituents by hyphen. This this is a very good example. We have three three four trimethyl. Two pentanol. We have three methyls, so trimethyl. So three, three, four, three comma three comma four, trimethyl, two pentanol. If a substituent on a base chain contains substituent group, the substituent is called compound substituent. So let me explain this. Substituent itself is also having again substituents. So first, they should be the substituent nomenclature should be completed, and then it should be put in a bracket and attached to the base name to make a complete compound. Now here the case in point is we have a substituent, and that substituent is we have a dinitrophenyl substituent. and the place where it is joined will be called as one number and accordingly anti clockwise will give 2 and 4 so 1 2 4 dinitrophenyl propionic acid now we will deal very fast with various classes of organic compounds and there are in general there are iopac nomenclature and then we will summarize it let let us say the first class of alkenes and cycloalkenes and the names should always end with a and e here are certain examples 2 3 dimethylhexane in cyclopentane in alkenes and cycloalkenes will end with in in We have two, three dimethyl one hexene, three methyl cyclo two hexene. In case of alkynes, the suffix will become yne, so n will be get converted to yne. So you have four methyl two hexene, hexene. Carboxylic acids, the suffix will be oic acid, so n becomes oic acid. So you have three methyl pentoic acid, three methyl cyclopentoic acid. You have four bromonaptoic acid, and so on. So acid halides, amides, acid anhydrides, ester, acid salts. They are derivatives of carboxylic acids, wherein. The OH of the carboxylic acid group is replaced with halogen X or amino NH2, or in case of anhydrides with RCO group, or with case of uh, ester alkoxy group, or even with a metal cation in case of salts. So the general rule applicable to the nomenclature of acid derivatives are adopted for these compounds, and the suffix is definitely different for each class. Now these can be the primary functional groups or this can also act as a substituent depending on in both cases what nomenclature should be done is shown in the next table so for example if we are talking about acid halides so it will come when the part of the base chain oil halide when it is what is a Uh, substituent, then it becomes carbonyl halide. Uh, similarly, if you have the amide, 
then it becomes part of the base chain amide and if it is a substituent it becomes a carboxamide for anhydride oic anhydride or carboxy anhydride and for ester it becomes alkyloate or alkyl carboxylate in case of salt it becomes catenoate or the name of the cation carboxylate so here it becomes ethanol chloride ethanamide ethanol anhydride ethyl ethanoate and these are so many sodium ethanoate etc benzamide <coughs> In case of aldehydes, suffix is al, so n becomes al. 3 methyl butanol. In case of ketones, suffix is on, so e becomes on. Acetone, acetophenone, benzophenone, 4 chlorobenzophenone. In case of nitriles, the suffix is nitrile, so full alkane name and then alkane nitrile, propane nitrile, cyclopentane carbon, either you call it as nitrile or carbon nitrile. Hydroxy and mercapto derivatives, the N becomes all. And in case of Mercapto group becomes thiol. So you have whether propanol, propane thiol or means E is replaced with all. So propane E is replaced with propanol. Propane last E is replaced with thiol, propane thiol, so you have got phenol, thiophenol, etc. Yes, of the amines, the suffix is amine, so the ending E of the alkene is replaced with amine word. So propanamine, cyclopentanamine, methanamine, etc. In case of ethers, Hello, nitro and nitroso derivatives. The names of the compounds are prefixed to the names of the parent compound chain, and the locants and groups are determined by the general rules. That means now here it is functional group is not suffixed but it is prefixed. So, for example, methoxymethane. Methoxythane, or in case of halo compounds, chloropropane, chlorobenzene, in case of nitro, nitropropane, nitrobenzene, the location is indicated by the number separated by hyphen. Compounds contain two functional groups. Most important functional group is given the principal status and it is coming in the base name. So here phenol OH is given the preference, so two nitrophenol amine is given preference, so hydroxyaniline acid is given preference, so chloro butanoic acid. So after seeing all these important functional groups or classes, we have this very ready regular type of table. If you follow it properly, you will understand what are the suffixes mainly or in certain cases prefixes for various functional group compounds. And we have taken here both the IUPAC names as well as the common names. So let us start with alkanes. We have AL, 
in the IUPAC nomenclature and we have here again paraffins we call them or olive in case of alkenes we call them olefins so in case of alkenes it is N only in case of alkenes N changes to in but in common name it becomes helene vileene helene in case of alkynes, <coughs> N changes to ein, alkyne, ethyne, but here it is acetylene, so methyl acetylene. In case of halogenated alkanes, it is taken as a prefix and so it can become haloalkane, so example is chloromethane. But in case of common name it is called as yield halide, so methyl chloride, it becomes a suffix. In case of hydroxyl group as a so main functional group or alcohols, becomes alkanol or methanol, E becomes all, but here it is suffixed as yield alcohol, so methyl alcohol. In case of ether, it gets a prefix and becomes oxyalkane, so methoxymethane. But here it gets suffix in common name and becomes yield ether, so becomes dimethyl ether. We can understand dimethyl ether, dimethyl ether can be called as methoxymethane in case of IUPAC, while <coughs> alkyl ether in case of dimethyl ether. N to all, in case of aldehydes, alkenal, methanal, formaldehyde, while in case of common compounds, Further for ketones, E to own, ketone to acetone, carboxylic acid, E to oic acid and uh, here it can be varying, it can be oic acid, it can be eic acid, formic acid, propinoic acid and in case of it can be in case of butane, it can be butyric acid, so it varies. In case of acid halides, it is E becomes oil halide, where here it is suffixed as yield halide, acetyl chloride. <coughs> In case of anhydrides, E becomes oic anhydride, so alkanoic anhydride, ethanoic anhydride. But here it is called as anhydride. So acetic acid word is changing to anhydride. So acetic acid will become acetic anhydride. In case of uh, amido or carboxyamido groups, E to amide, so alkanamide, ethanamide. Here it will be called as what you can say acid will change to amide so acetic acid ic acid will go and will be replaced with amide acetamide in case of esters e becomes oate so alkyl alkanoate so ethyl ethanoate well here it becomes alkyl ester so ethyl acetate. So each acid becomes eight. Okay. Here, in case of amino groups, E to amine, so alkanamine, 
मिथे नामाइन बट हियर इन केस ऑफ कॉमन कम नेम्स एन बिकम्स इलामाइन सो मिथे लामाइन सो दिस इज द डिफरेंस मिथे नामाइन मिथे लामाइन In case of nitro compounds, there is a prefix nitro alkane, so nitroethane. Same is followed in the common name also. In case of cyano, in IUPAC we call it as nitrile, so alkane nitrile, methane nitrile. However, in common names we call it as yield cyanide, so methyl cyanide. In case of sulfonic acids, we have alkane sulfonic acids, so methane sulfonic acid. The same thing follows in common name nomenclature also. In case of mercapto, we can call it as alkane thiols, so it becomes thiol, but here it is called as alkyl mercapton, so yl mercapton, ethyl mercapton. So if you remember this, it is very easy to understand. So if a functional compound has two functional groups, the one with the lower priority is indicated by this prefix and you have to follow this table, very very important particularly for the carbonyl compounds like for example, if it is what you say, the main functional group the suffix becomes oic acid, but if it is a substituent, it becomes carboxy. If ester is the main functional group, it becomes O8 as a suffix, but it becomes alkoxy carbonyl as a prefix. In case of amide, it becomes a suffix if it is a primary functional group, so it becomes alkane amide, but it becomes amido if it is a functional secondary functional group, so it becomes here the prefix. Same thing in case of nitrile, if it is a main functional group, it becomes a suffix as nitrile, but as a substituent, it becomes cyano, formaldehyde al, or it becomes oxor formal as a substituent, keto own as a base name, but becomes oxor as a substituent, alcohol as a base name, it becomes ol, or as a suffix, it becomes all, but as a Functional as a substituent, it becomes hydroxy. For amino compounds, it becomes alkane amine as a suffix, but if it is a substituent, it becomes amino. For alkene, it becomes in, but it's a substituent, it becomes alkenyl. For alkyne, it becomes vine, but for prefix, it becomes alkenyl. Uh, in case of simple alkanes, of course, it becomes ane, but as a substituent, it is called as alkyl, as a prefix. For ether and halogen compounds, anyways, in IUPAC name, they are always prefixed as alkoxy and halo. Either they are the primary functional groups or secondary functional groups. Writing the structural formula from the given IUPAC name is based on some steps. So let us see, for example, ethyl 2, 5 dimethyl, 1, 4 heptadiene. And uh, here is a ready regner for that. You have to first fix up the parent name. And then you have to, that is based on the carbon atom chains, the parent compound. And the primary functional group will be sub attached as a suffix. And uh, the substituents will be attached as a prefix. And we come back to the example. So you have two unsaturated positions at 1 and 4. That is your primary functional group, so 1, 4 heptadiene. And then you have three substituents, 2,5-dimethyl and 3-ethyl, so they will come as prefix. So 
if you revise the general rules for writing locate the longest chain contain the principal function group and accommodate as many as the secondary function groups in multiple bonds select the root a word corresponding to the length of the chain number the longest chain from the end nearer to the principal function group so the other the primary as well as other things will try to get minimum number of total of the locants depending on the nature of the carbon bonds you will give the suffix in or in or in is the root word add suitable prefixes and suffixes with numericals to indicate the number and position of the location or locant for these functional groups priority is given in this order these are the examples 4 hydroxy 2 pentanone and this is a much uh, complicated example aldehyde is given as a primary functional group status and so it is one all it also a double bond so octyene one all is the base name and then you have two substituents alphabetically 7 hydroxy 3 methoxy oct octyene all one all or just five in all writing a formula a structure formula from the given i practice step let us see some steps step number 1 is locate the parent alkanes from the name and write the number of carbon atoms of these alkanes so the name is hepta So write seven carbons in the step one. Step two. Locate the suffix which gives information and the name of the number of functional groups attached to it. So step number two, we have located the suffix. So here one and another is four. So one four heptadiene. <coughs> locate groups or substituents mentioned in the prefix to which these are attached or indicated by the locants so these are going to be the functional groups we see the other uh, the substituents sorry so we have two five dimethyl so locate and the ethyl so three ethyl two five dimethyl attached to it And the last step is of course add H to satisfy the carbon atoms. So we have just filled up the H atoms, satisfied the valency, and we have got your compound ready. So quite a nice example to remember. <coughs> you can write down the IUPAC names with all these exercises we have done for these compounds. These are for your practice. more you practice more you can become expert this will only once you have understood the rules systematically polish it by practicing this is vice versa and given here 21 are you pet names some are also common names try to practice try to structure you can also check it by once you write a structure whether it is right or wrong you can always check it by writing whatever name you have written pasting in google and searching for images you will get the structures you can yourself verify whether it is right or wrong so it was quite a long lecture because you have to deal it with this nomenclature in a very systematic manner iupac nomenclature is a systematic nomenclature so thanks thanks a lot for your patience and i'll advise you to go on practicing both the ways from the names write the structure go to the google and verify more and more you will practice you will pick up the nonsense of how to write these things and vice versa 
from the structure apply all the rules you have learned recapitulate them and again verify so thanks a lot for your patience thank you very much